Hello guys, today I'm just uh, making a video on some basic insights on how to solve questions related to the topic resultant forces. I know many of you guys have this topic coming up for exams, so hopefully this video can help you all in order to solve these type of questions. Uh, by the way, if you guys want to see the questions more better, you guys can change the quality settings of this video in the Udemy settings and time codes will be in the description box below if you guys want to skip to any questions you guys like. And yeah, if you all have enjoyed the video, please do a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. And yeah, let's begin with the video. All right, so the first question is that we can see that there's a stopping distance of a car, which is the sum of the thinking distance and the braking distance. So if you guys can see that there's a table below which shows us the thinking distance and braking distance, which varies with speed. So now the question is asking us is what is meant by the term of braking distance of a vehicle. So I've just written this down just to save up time. Is that for one mark you have to just explain that this is the distance which is traveled under the braking force. That's all you need to write down for exams. Then there's nothing else left for that type of question. All right. So now the data in the table above refers to a car in good mechanical condition, which is driven by an alert driver. You have to explain why the stopping distance of a car increases if the driver is very tired. So, if the driver is very tired, this means that the reaction time will increase, which would indirectly increase, let's say, the thinking distance in meters, which would incre increase the stopping distance, because stopping distance is technically like the sum of the thinking distance and the braking distance. So, what I'm going to say is that the reaction time, the reaction time, increases all right so since the reaction time increases you're going to say that the thinking distance increases as well thinking distance just say increase and the stopping distance also increases it's like a simultaneous process happening when dealing with this type of question all right so for two marks you just got to mention that that's more than enough now the student looks at the data in the table above and writes the following is that the thinking distance is proportional to the speed. Now this symbol is just for proportionality, by the way, here, all right? And you have to explain whether the student is correct. Uh, like I said in the first question is that the proportionality it seems a bit off when dealing with speed is that as speed increases by 10 to about 15, thinking distance also increases with a variable of about, let's say, 3. As proportional, but the breaking distance does not have to uh, doesn't seem to have like any factor that increases by since if you subtract 13.5 minus 6, they don't add up in proportional statements. This is adding about 7.5. So if you had 13.5 plus 7.5, that would make it 21, not 24. So there is no proportionality happening in breaking distance. So that's the reason why we're going to say that no, the student is not correct. The reason is because because as speed increases we're going to mention that the proportionality reason as speed increases thinking distance increases by a factor that's true thinking distance increases if you check in the table as well thinking distance increases by some sort of factor but the breaking distance does not have some sort of factor it increases by each time so let's say the thinking distance it does not increase Thinking distance does not have a factor increase. All right, let's move on. To next question. Now, applying the brakes with too much force can cause a car to skid. The distance the car skids before, let's say, stopping depends on the friction between the road surface and the car tires and also the speed of the car. Friction can be investigated by pulling a device called a sled across a surface at constant speed. Now, the figure below shows a sled being pulled correctly and incorrectly across the surface. The constant of friction for the surface is calculated from the value of the force pulling the sled and the weight of the sled. So you guys can see the correct version and the incorrect version. Now, why is it important that the sled is pulled at a constant speed, like I ticked here, is that if the sled accelerates, the value for the constant of the friction will be wrong, all right? So as for one mark, you're going to mention that reason. Let's move on to the next question, is that if the sled is pulled at an angle to the surface, the value calculated for the constant of the friction would be in, would not be appropriate. Now, the reason is because if it's pulled at an angle, Technically, the horizontal component of the force would be pulling the sled forward. So now, see guys, the bonus tip here is that the main thing about resultant forces is basically resultant forces is the overall force that's acting on, an op on a point or an object. So technically, a single force is called the resultant forces, and you have something called a free body diagram, which shows all the forces that is acting on the object. 
So we're going to mention that the horizontal, that the horizontal component, of the force, right? Horizontal component of force would be pulled forward. Would pull the sled forward, right? Would pull the sled forward. Now this would indirectly cause the vertical component of the force, vertical component of the force, to let's say to lift to lift the sled which indirectly reduces force reduces the force on sled alright so as for two marks that you guys going to mention that now by measuring the length of the skin marks now this is a calculation question so get your calculators ready in order to solve this type of question alright so you can see that an accident investigator determines that the distance a car traveled between the brakes being applied and the stopping was about 22 meters so they've given us a value there the investigator used the sled to determine the fraction oh uh, sorry the friction the investigator then calculated the, that the car decelerated at 7.2 meters per second square now you have to calculate the speed of the car just before the brakes were applied now you have to give your answer to approximately let's say two significant figures and you have to use the correct equation from the physics equation sheet now this physics equation sheet is given to you in the exam so Hopefully you guys remember the formulas and understand how to use them because it's really critical that you guys know how to do that. So the car decelerated at that kind of speed and the distance was about that. So the formula that you guys have to use here is let's say uh, there's a formula. I remember there was a formula called V square minus U square is equivalent to let's say uh, where the 22 meters, which is multiplied by your deceleration, where your distance is multiplied by your uh, by that factor. So I'm just trying to understand how that works here. So you have the formula. I'm just trying to recall the formula. I think it's somewhere about v square. Let's say calculate the speed of the car just before. So what we're going to do is going to use this formula. Let's say. Uh, where you have u square minus u square is equivalent to 2as. Now a just rep represents the acceleration and s just represents the distance in this case. All right. So what you have here is that you have your distance given. So you're going to have where minus u2 is going to be equivalent to 2 times acceleration to be about 7.2 meters per second square times the distance to be about 22 meters. Now if you're going to write down this answer right and you're going to square root this answer, you should be getting a value of about, let me see, just check using the calculator, you should be getting a value of about, let's say, minus u is going to be equal to 17.79. So that's going to be a value, the speed of the car, just before it's going to be a value of rounding up to two significant figures, which is going to be about 18 meters per second. Just cut out the signs, that's all right. So you have 18 meters per second. That's going to be our answer for about three marks. All right, let's move on. Next question. Now, the next question is that the diagram shows a small radio control flying toy. The fan inside the toy pushes air downwards, creating a lift force on the toy. You guys can see that there is an equation in the box to calculate the velocity of the air when the toy is hovering. So you guys can see that there is a formula for force, which is equivalent to the change in momentum divided by the time taken for the change. So we need to calculate the velocity of the air when the toy is hovering. So they've given us the formula. All we need to do is uh, to find out the value. So they have given us any values. They've given us the weight. And the formula for momentum is it's PMV, all right? So where P represents the momentum, and uh, that's where the change in momentum takes place. So we're going to calculate the momentum to be roughly about the mass, which is about 1.5 kilograms times the velocity, in this case, is not known. All right, so that's going to be your momentum. Now that's your momentum, all right? I'm just going to mention here that this is the momentum. Now you're going to use the force, which is going to be equivalent, which is given to us, in this case, as 0.6 newtons, if you guys observe in the question, it's going to be equivalent to the change in momentum, which is going to be using this formula, 1.5 times the V divided by time, which is given to us as 10 seconds. You're going to multiply that. You're going to get V 
is going to be equivalent to 0 0.6 times 10 to give you roughly about 6 divided by 1.5 which is going to give you a value of about 4 meters per second now this is your calculation all I've done is that I've used two formulas here the formula for force and the formula for momentum I've just substituted the values that's all it's pretty straightforward and simple you guys can do this so it's four meters per second meters per second now explain why the toy accelerates upwards when the fan rotates faster now the reason is because you have to explain it for two marks is that there is a greater change in momentum there is a greater let's say change in momentum in momentum all right and uh, there is a greater mass and error you can mention that as well and this force upwards increases causing force upwards force upwards to increase upwards to increase that's going to be your reason why this is happening all right you can also mention that the force up is greater than the force down that's also fine all right now the toy is not easy to control so it often falls to the ground. You have to explain how the flexible polystyrene base helps to protect the toy from being damaged when it crashes to the ground. Now the thing is it increases, this is now stopping distances uh, chapter when dealing with this type of questions. So technically it increases let's say the time to stop, right? Increases the time to stop which decreases, let's say, which decreases rate of change of momentum rate of change you guys have to mention these keywords rate of change of momentum and reduces you have to explain the result and reduces the force which reduces the force on the toy so what you have to explain is that it increases the time it takes to stop the um the, the toy from falling and hitting the ground as well as which decreases the rate of change of momentum and it indirectly reduces the force on the toy itself right this last one on the toy all right let's move on to the next question now the next question is that you can see that there's a brick which is shown in the diagram and is being pushed but it's not moving so it's upper force on the table you guys can see all the forces is that the pushing force does not make the brick move. Explain why. Now, uh, the, e the reason is because, uh, let's say that the pushing force could be equivalent, could be equal to the frictional force, to the frictional force, all right? That could be your answer, or that is balanced, or, or a relevant force can be used in this case. Now, the weight of the brick does not make it move downwards. I explain why because it's balanced by the upper force of the table like I said it's balanced by the upper force of the table and the weight of the brick does not make it move up because it's balanced by the upward force of the table so you're going to mention that that it is let's say balanced by upwards force I'm just going to reload the system again guys so that you guys can see I'm editing the PDF again let me just check this again yeah, so it's balanced by upward force uh, of the table. All right. Okay, now a bigger pushing force does not make the brick, brick slide across the table. You have to write down one thing that the sliding brick will do to the surface of the table. It, it could make it slightly warm. That could happen. So it could make it, it, could make it hot, slightly warm. We can mention that it bears away or it damages the surface. That's also fine. All right, now the next... Uh, question states that what is meant by the term resultant force like I said resultant force is just a single force that has the effect as all the forces combined or it's just a single force or the overall force so you can mention that that it is a single force uh, that has the same effect that has the same effect as all forces combined all right as all forces Combined. Now that's going to be your answer for about one mark that you guys got to mention. Now describe the movement of the aircraft when the resultant force is zero. So it's going to move at constant speed according to Newton's, let's say the Newton's, whether it's the Newton's first law states that if the resultant force is zero and that's acting on an object, then an object that's continuously moving is going to move at a constant speed in the same direction or at constant velocity. So it's Newton's first law concept. So you're going to say that's going to be at constant Let's say it's going to be at constant speed in a straight line, of course. 
in a straight line or a constant velocity that's also okay now the aircraft has a takeoff mass of about 320,000 kilograms each of the four engines can produce maximum force about 240 kilonewtons you have to calculate the maximum acceleration of the aircraft is that the maximum acceleration now the formula is that you have to calculate the acceleration all right so you can see that there's the force FMA you're going to use the formula FMA all right it's a nice triangle now FMA is Newton's second law where the force is equivalent to mass times acceleration acceleration is equal to force divided by mass is equivalent to 240 kilonewtons we have to know this is one bonus tip here is that one kilonewton is equal to thousand newtons so 240 kilonewtons 240 kilonewtons is equivalent to about 240 times thousand newtons which is about 24,000 newtons so you have 24,000 newtons always convert your values divided by the mass which is given to us as 320,000 kilograms now once you do that you're going to get a value of about once you let's say once you divide 240 kilonewtons divided by 320 kilograms you're going to get a value of about let's say 0 0.75 um, let's say the value is going to be meters per second square but the reason is because you're not going to use this value now the reason is because the force is given to us as killing units right and 0 0.75 could be an answer that you guys can get for let's say let's say for one mark or something like that now because now since each of the four engines produce that you're going to do is that you're going to have 0 0.75 meters per, uh, meters per second squared times four engines which is going to give you a value of about three meters per second squared now that's the re reason why we're going to score those good marks is because we have mentioned that we're multiplying it by 0 0.75 times 4 because there are four engines in the question so three meters per second squared is going to be your answer all right, as the aircraft moves along the runway to take off, its acceleration decreases even though the force from the engines is constant. You have to explain the reason why is because as the speed increases, the air resistance also increases. So you guys have to mention that the air resistance increases as well, all right, which will reduce the resultant force, which will reduce the resultant force now this is an answer that you guys can mention as speed increases the air resistance increases which reduces the resultant force for about let's say two marks all right that, that's more than enough now let's move on to the next question now when two objects interact they exert forces on each other and that the forces are equal in size we have to explain which statement about the forces is correct is that the forces are equal in size and they act in opposite directions now that's going to be your answer for about one mark. Now a fisherman pulls a boat towards land. This is a calculation question. You have to describe the motion of the boat. He exerts about 300 newtons, 250 newtons. Now you're going to have 300 newtons, 300 newtons minus 250 newtons because you're going to subtract the larger force. Let's say you're going to subtract the smaller force from the larger force, right? Indirectly, you're going to get 50 newtons to the right. So that's going to happen. It's going to the boat's going to propel to the right so you're going to say that the motion of the boat is going to be to the right for about 300 newtons so it's going to move forwards and accelerates so that's some key words that you guys can mention you guys can also mention to the right and it's accelerating or you can mention in the direction of the 300 newton force that's also okay now when the boat reaches land the result the resist force increases to about 300 newtons the fisherman continues to exert a force about 300 newtons. Describe the motion of the boat is that it is constant velocity to the right. All right, all he's doing is just increasing it. Let's move on to the next question. Now, explain your answer to part B2. Now, the reason is because it's constant, like I said in the in some of the questions above, is that Newton's first law, when the resultant force acting on an object is, is zero, and the, the, the object is going to move at constant speed, at constant velocity in the same direction, all right? So, you're going to say that it's going to be because the resultant, resultant force is equal to zero. That's it. The resultant force is zero, and that all forces are balanced and are equal, so the boat... You mentioned that, so the boat continues, continues in the same direction, in the same direction at same speed. 
that's going to be your answer at same speed so for about let's say two marks all right let's move on to the next question now the next question is that an other fisherman comes to help pull the boat each fisherman pulls with a force of about 300 newtons as shown in diagram two diagram two is drawn to scale add to diagram two uh, to show a single force that has the same effect as two 300 newton forces you have to do to mind the value of this result of force now the value of this is yeah, you guys are going to use the parallelogram method or the triangle version to draw this you're going to draw some angle here some angle there you're going to draw some parallelogram methods you guys can check some youtube videos of that how to do that and the methods so you're going to draw two parallelograms let's say two sides from each other which is going to give you a nice parallel parallelogram and you're going to measure this side this is going to be your resultant force now the value is going to come about let's say 300 to about no, 546 newtons but the range here is that it's going to be between 545 newtons to 595 newtons, all right? Okay, so you guys got the basic idea of how to do that type of question. Now let's move on to the next question. Is that some students have designed and built an electric-powered go-kart. The go-kart always had the same mass and used the same motor. By changing the shape from the first design to the final design will affect the top speed of the go-kart. So this is going to move faster. Now the reason is because there is less surface area to volume ratio than the first design. This is going to move faster because it's more streamlined. So you're going to mention that. You're going to mention that it's more streamlined. And then, uh, like I said, it has lower surface area. So it's more streamlined. And that the air resistance, like I said, is that the air, air resistance is, let's say, smaller. Air resistance is smaller. So reaches high speed. So reaches, so reaches high speed, higher speed. So that's going to be your answer for about three remarks. You guys are going to mention that. So the final design is going to move faster because it's more streamlined. The air resistance is smaller because the surface area is decreased as well as it reaches higher speed as a result of that decrease in the surface area. All right, let's move on to the next question. Now, the final design, you guys can see there's a graph here that shows the velocity of the go-kart changes during the first 40 seconds of the race. So you guys can see that there's velocity, and you have to use the graph to calculate the acceleration of the go-kart between the points J and K. So take the, let's say, take the gradient in this case. It's going to be roughly about, so if you guys take the gradient, this is going to be 3, right? The points are going to be 3 since 5 divided by 5 is 1 per square block so it's going to be if you're going to take the gradient take the gradient because the gradient is equivalent on a velocity time graph time graph guys remember it's very critical is that the gradient is equivalent to your acceleration all right so i'm going to take the gradient between the points j and k so if you look closely this point if i'm just going to draw this is that this lines up to about the value of three so you're going to have uh, your answer to about three uh, to about two significant figures. So it's going to be five divided by three. That's a gradient to be about 1.66. It's going to be equivalent to 1.7 meters square. And that's going to be about for two significant figures. This is going to be 1.7. That's going to be answer for about two marks. Use a graph to calculate the distance of the go cart that travels between the points J and K. Like I said, now this time in terms of distance, in, on a velocity time graph, your distance, one bonus tip here, is that your distance is equivalent to the area that is traveled, right? The area travel, but it's going to be the area of the squares, area of squares. That's going to be your distance. Everything is going to be below that shaded portion. So between that, you're going to say that your area is going to be area. You're going to take the area of this triangle, of, of this triangle. So what you're going to do is that since you're going to take the area of the square, well, let's say in this case, it's going to be the area of whatever shape it is, the area of the triangle. In this case, between points J and K, you're going to have half times base, which is 3 times the height, which is 5. Like I said, the base is going to be 3. That's going to be here. This is going to be your base. And the height, which is about 5, is going to be your height. And you know the area of a triangle is about half times base times height, so it's going to be half times 3 times 5. That's going to be your answer, half times 3 times 5. is going to be an answer of about 7.5. You don't need to round this off meters. So 7.5 meters is going to be your answer. Now, what causes most of the resi resistive forces that is acting on the go-kart? As the go-kart is moving, the air resistance is going to be one of the resistive forces that is going to act on it. So it's going to be the air resistance. You guys can mention that for about one mark. 
that should be okay you guys can mention that there's wind as a form of resistance that's also okay but just just mention air resistance that's more than enough all right so this seems to be the end of all the questions if you guys have enjoyed the video please do like share and subscribe to the channel it really helps a lot and do comment below on what your thoughts are about this video and uh, yeah check the time codes and i think that's a new content will be posted soon do check out the new trailer which i posted it's pretty fun and yeah i think that's it guys all right bye guys